As we count down to Chandrayaan 3's landing on the moon, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce here on India Today, Mr. Madhavan Nair, former ISRO chief. Mr. Nair, Namaskaram. Thank you very much for taking the time out and joining us here on India Today, sir. Uh, at this point, the countdown is on. We're hours away. I'd like you to explain a few technicalities to us, Mr. Nair. We got a news break coming in from inside the ISRO headquarters, where I am currently, uh, that the commands have been sent across to the Vikram lander, that it will be be locked finally in a few hours from now. Can you explain what really that means, sir? Uh, well, certainly this is going to be the most uh, difficult and challenging moment as far as the Chandrayaan 3 mission is concerned. To get out of the moon's orbit and to have a soft landing is an extremely difficult process. Very few countries have succeeded in the past and that too the success rate is <clears throat> quite low. Uh, as you have explained earlier, the Chandrayaan 2, we had a mishap uh, just two kilometers above the surface of the moon. And uh, since then, ISRO has done a considerable amount of design modifications, studies, simulations, and then uh, with that confidence, they have built the Chandrayaan 3, and uh, these operations are going to be initiated today evening. Uh, the the uh, the real challenge is uh, in identifying a clear spot for landing and reducing the speed of the spacecraft from about uh, six kilometer per hour to something like uh, a few meter per second and uh, also to see that it lands in a clear area where there are no boulders or no craters so this uh, operation is uh, completely autonomous and programmed to be implemented by the onboard computer with uh, its uh, host of sensors and the algorithm which is built into it. Uh, it is based on the ground simulation. Uh, these uh, parameters have finalized and uh, if anything misbehaves, either the thrusters or the sensors, the laser ranging system or the cameras, uh, we can get into a problem. But at the same time, the amount of simulation what they have done uh, deter uh, perturbing the parameters to the maximum extent possible and identifying possible scenarios of failure also and how to reconfigure and go ahead. Uh, so these experiments have been done successfully by ISRO and uh, there is a good chance that we will be able okay. to make this event happen. The last uh, leg of the journey, the spacecraft is going to hover uh, over the surface of the moon and from there uh, identify a location, suitable location, and laterally move to the location and descend slowly to the surface. So this is going to be the most crucial moment for the mission. Sir, what you're describing to us essentially happens, if I'm not wrong, uh, in the last 15 minutes, which very often has been referred to as that 15 minutes of terror. In that, sir, is there any control really that the scientists have or is it completely automated? Uh, well, uh, I think people uh, uh, named it as the last 15 minutes of uh, horror. Uh, it is so, because uh, it is in a totally unknown territory. There are no beacons or GPS to gate. It is to be self-contained and the sensors on board, the gyroscopes, the inertial system, the cameras, laser system, everything has to precisely work. And there is no uh, possibility of any ground intervention once the initiation of the sequence is done. So this is uh, that's how where, where I think the anxiety comes. Uh, of course, uh, to the extent possible, redundancies have been built in. But still, if uh, there are occasions in which things fail, and uh, if any such a glitch happens, we may get into a catastrophe, and that's a real worry uh, for everybody and anxious. But at the same time, I'm uh, with I'm confident that with the amount of uh, simulations carried out and the extent of uh, design modification carried out by ISRO, the mission can will be a success. Sir, is there, uh, and this is a tough question, but is there a margin of error that ISRO has accounted for in Chandrayaan 3? Uh, can you repeat the question again? Is there, is there a margin of error that's been identified by ISRO scientists, sir, in Chandrayaan 3? Yes, I think uh, from the, based on the Chandrayaan 2 experience, 
uh, they have identified what all uh, can go wrong and uh, they have perturbed to the something like six sigma level that is to the extent uh, the imagination can go and uh, with that uh, theoretical probability is the of a failure is uh, one in a million uh, but I don't think the theory and the practice that would be uh, match uh, if any uh, which happened beyond the limit of whatever we have conceived uh, uh, in the simulation test uh, there can be problems but at the same time the chances are very of such problems occurring are very remote and let's hope so mr madhavan nair can you explain to us why this mission is particularly challenging uh, because we've chosen the south pole of the moon why does that make it all the more challenging, sir, than landing in any other part of the moon? Uh, well, I think the polar region of the moon is uh, least explored uh, by any country in the past. So that way it's a very unique opportunity for India to collect uh, uh, fundamental uh, data about the lunar surface, its mineral com content, the presence of water and the helium-3 and so on. So this will help in establishing the next generation of uh, the uh, uh, exploratory uh, laboratories and so on. And also it will throw a lot of light on the origin of the moon and the, how the condition of the planet Earth was there at the time of the moon separating from the Earth. So that way the scientifically it is going to be a very important event. And uh, the fact that uh, very few countries have succeeded in the past is a very technical challenge. The technology demonstration is something which will show the power of uh, Indian space program uh, to the global community. Mr. Nair, with this being a success, once Chandrayaan-3 touches down on the moon, uh, do you believe it sets the stage for many more successful missions like Mangalyaan, like Gaganyaan? Uh, yes, I think the, already the Aditya mission for observing the sun is very much on and uh, is going to be launched soon. Uh, they will be observing various uh, solar phenomena and then it's a coupling with the planet Earth and so on. And uh, similarly for the exploration of the Venus also, it is on the anvil. And uh, definitely with the confidence what we gain out of the Chandrayaan 3, the future planetary exploratory mission also will pick up momentum. Uh, and finally, Mr. Madhavan Nair, would you like to give a shout out, any message uh, to your ISRO colleagues who have been working for the last many years on Chandrayaan 3? Your message, sir, to them? Uh, well, I think uh, Chandrayaan 2 has uh, taught us some lessons, but at the same time, it is uh, glad to note that the, the orbiter, which was part of the Chandrayaan 2, is still functioning and that will act as a data relay station for Chandrayaan 3 as well and uh, the lessons learned from Chandrayaan 2 has been uh, used for uh, implementing the corrective actions and I wish uh, all success uh, for the team ISRO for this uh, historic event. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Madhavan Nair, for joining us here on India Today with your insights, uh, with all of your expertise and your knowledge here, giving us a sense of what Chandrayaan 3's mission uh, really is all about and, of course, what happens in that crucial 15 minutes as Vikram Lander gets closer and closer to the moon's surface. Always a pleasure to have you here with us on India Today.